Sorry to cut you short there, but I, I saw a very, very disturbing video. Just to take away from that point, I'm going to Brahma Chalani, but I want to make that point there. Uh, I saw a very, uh, a very disturbing video of Brahma Chalani of, of an Indian who is a Canadian citizen now and has been living there uh, for two generations. He's two generations old in Canada. Uh, facing a lot of hate because of what has happened. I saw a video where this, this old lady, right, who's a Canadian citizen, uh, maybe of Canadian origin, uh, targeting an Indian because he's of Indian origin, but he's still a Canadian citizen. Look at, look at the levels to which this can go and the ramifications it may have. Because there are three million of, of, of Indians living there, of Indians or people of Indian origin could be much more. But the kind of ramifications that someone uh, as irresponsible as, as Trudeau uh, you know, could could make on the people of Indian origin, the threat that he poses with the kind of moves that he's made. Dr. Chalani. There are two things here. First, whenever in the past a foreign state has accused agents of a foreign government of carrying out a killing on its soil, it has normally presented forensic audio or video evidence in the public domain. For example, in 2010, when Israeli agents killed a Hamas leader in Dubai, the Dubai police, within days, released forensic audio and video evidence. So that's been the pattern in the past. Now, in the case of Trudeau, he triggered a downward spiral in bilateral relations without releasing any evidence. And in recent days, he has admitted that he was relying on raw intelligence, not on tangible uh, evidence. On raw intelligence, not on tangible evidence. So that's one. But I think there are two questions about India that we should keep in mind. First, India's public diplomacy. India is getting a bad press internationally. We should not forget that. The Indian viewpoint is not being presented in the international media. If you read the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Wall Street Journal, or even the Canadian press, they are giving one-sided version of the developments. Even the facts are being distorted. It's incumbent on India to do what is necessary in the public diplomacy domain. Uh, the press is biased in the West. We all know that. Yeah. I was but, about to say that, yeah. But, but um, should we just uh, take it uh, lying down? For example, Canada's uh, state-owned CBS television recently, in a few days ago, uh, had a 10-minute interview with Panun, the New York-based yeah. uh, yeah. guy, yeah. Know, who's been making terrorist threats against India. But did, was there any reaction well, to the Indian government? Them against Indian Canadians. Uh, that, that, you know, that, that uh, CBS was giving a platform to a to a well-known Sikh extremist who, who makes terrorist threats against India, and CBS has a bureau in New Delhi. So there have to be consequences for, for um, news organizations that give a voice to terrorist figures. The other thing uh, that, again, you know, we should not forget that in India, is the gap between what India is saying and what Canada is saying. Trudeau will leave office sooner or later. Yeah. But this problem will linger on. Absolutely. Even the, even the Conservative Party leader in Canada is pandering to Sikh militants. He went to Brampton, Gurdwara, Brampton. You know, Professor Latham is from Brampton, he said, right? Yeah. The Gurdwara in Brampton, Ontario, uh, that Gurdwara staged the parade float celebrating the assassination of Indira Gandhi. Yeah. That Gurdwara is the hotbed of Khalistan militancy. And the Conservative Party leader went and addressed Khalistanis there. So um, we should not think that this is just a Trudeau-created uh, problem. It may the problem may have been uh, problem may have been created by Trudeau, but he will bequeath that problem to the next government, and India-Canada relations will not s suddenly uh, become uh, good uh, once Trudeau leaves. In fact, for example, I India has been. Repeating, uh, repeatedly saying that Canada is welcoming criminals, gangsters yeah. from Indian Punjab, including giving visas to known gangsters, thereby fostering an excess between Canada-based Sikh separatists yeah. and organized um, crime and drug syndicates with the goal of reviving Sikh militancy in India. And what is Ottawa's response? Ottawa says, 
that India's definition of what constitutes a crime or terrorist action does not always mesh with Canadian legal okay. standards. Okay. Okay. So, you know, the gap between the two uh, will persist under a new government in, in Ottawa. Yeah, no, I, I want to I take that point to Dean, actually. Dean, uh, 